Hi, my name is Jeff Fowler. I'm the CEO of Hodinkee. And the watch that I wore most in 2022 is the Omega Speedmaster Hodinkee 10th Anniversary Limited Edition. Uh, why this watch? It's the watch that I bought to celebrate and commemorate. Joining Hodinkee as the CEO earlier this year uh, was the perfect watch. It's the watch that inspired Ben to uh, found the company back in 2008. And uh, yeah, it's a great watch. My name is Alex McMahon. I work uh, in operations here at Hodinkee. Uh, the watch that I wear the most in 2022 was a Tudor Black Bay 58. Um, I love this watch. I've always wanted it. Uh, my wife made me an ultimatum this year. She said I could get this watch or a riding lawnmower. Um, so I decided that I would wear this uh, Tudor and I'll keep push mowing the grass. Hi, my name is Allison. I do brand marketing here at Hodinkee and the watch I wore the most this year is my Cartier Tank Franciste. I wore it maybe about twice last year, but ever since my journey coming into Hodinkee, I've worn it almost every day and every time I look down on it, I think about all the memories that I formed here at Hodinkee, like pulling together my first event and working on big shoots like the CBS production. It's my first real big girl watch, so I'm just very proud every time I look down at it and just continue thinking about the success and how many more times I'm gonna wear this watch in the future. I'm Guy, I work in the watch shop as one of our technicians, and this 1973 Seiko Day Date is the watch I wore the most this year because it's so easy to wear. Um, it's got this really comfortable original beads of rice bracelet and just a classic Seiko case shape um, that make it just so easy to throw on and wear with anything. I can dress it up, dress it down, doesn't really matter. Goes with it all and I love it. Hi, my name is Miles and I'm a luxury watch buyer here at Hodinkee. Uh, the watch I wore the most in 2022 was my Ralph Lauren automotive chronograph. Um, there's a lot of reasons to love it, in particular the design, but uh, for me personally, it reminds me of this great day when I was in college. I had an amazing friend who lent me his 1960 Ferrari GT Cabriolet for a whole afternoon, if you can believe it. Uh, I probably put 100 miles on that car that day, but it was one of my favorite days. And uh, whatever I wear, it reminds me of uh, that time and lets me go back. Hi, my name is Isa. I'm a senior photographer for Houdinki here in Atlanta. And today I want to show you my Marie Lacroix, Le Classique. My collection has grown over the years, but this watch has a big place in my rotation. And it's because it's the watch that got me into watches. It was my first watch. It means a lot to me. And it also has a very nice move face. Hi, I'm Yu, Editor-in-Chief of Hodinkee Japan. This is my tank number. Tank originally produced in 1917 by Louis Garrier, and this is the lead production series made from 1973 to the late 1980s at the Louis Garrier collection. Garrier never reproduced tank normal so far, except this collection. The reason why this watch is so special to me is because this might be my first year watch from 1984. Hi, I'm Alex, I'm a photographer here at Hodinkee, and the watch I wore the most this year was my Breitling Aerospace F5659. One of the reasons I wore this the most is not only is it my first luxury watch, but it hits all the marks for me. It's lightweight, titanium, which is amazing. It's thin, I don't like a big clunky watch, and ultimately it's very functional. This model specifically, and any of the early Aerospaces, to me they're just the most aesthetically pleasing of the line. Just simple, thin dials, I love the two-tone look. Without even realizing, it really became the perfect watch for me. My name is Enri Acosta. I'm Chief Brand Officer here at Hodinkee. And the watch that I wore most in 2022 is the Zenith Chronomaster Original Limited Edition for Hodinkee. Um, I've always wanted an El Primero. Um, I think it's a classic watch. And to have the privilege to modernize what I think is one of the most iconic watches of all time is something that we're really proud of. Um, I love the salmon dial and the touches of gray. Um, I think it gives it a kind of like really futuristic kind of approach, um, look and feel. Um, and it's uh, one that I was not able to take off for most of the year. Hey, I'm Becca. I work on the client services team as a supervisor. Um, and this Breda Esther is my most worn watch of the year. This watch is my most worn just because it has sort of an elegant appearance. Um, I love the gold case. It goes with a lot of my jewelry. Um, and then it just has really clean lines, so it goes with a lot of different outfits. I'm James Stacy, a senior writer with Hodinkee, and my watch of the year is the Bremont S302 GMT. 
I got it uh, late in the year before and just kind of put it on and didn't take it off. It's great on a ton of different straps. It's super handy to be able to see Geneva time whenever I want. Throw it on the right strap and you can take it swimming, diving, whatever you want. It's a perfect kind of simple dive GMT and I wore it a ton. Hi, I'm Kyosuke Editor of Hodegi Japan. There are one many watches uh, I wanted to get, but I bought this the issue of the Orient Flash this year. It's a mechanical watch, but when you press the button here, this LED on the bezel light up. It's a fun watch and I love it. Hey guys, happy holidays. Uh, I'm Logan Baker. I am an editor here. Uh, the watch I wore the most this year is my early 1970s vintage Zenith Defy. Uh, I picked it up new old stock in January. Uh, the best memory that I had with it this year was wearing it during Watches and Wonders and running into the Zenith team and being able to show it to them. Uh, some of them had said they'd never seen one of these before. It's got the TV dial. It's, it's super cool. Um, I love it. I'm Geneva. I'm an executive assistant here. And the watch I wore most in 2022 was my Nomos Tangente Hodunki LE. And uh, this was the first watch that I ever picked out and bought for myself. So it's very special to me. I was so excited when I first bought it um, and to put it on. And the OEM straps that came with it were too big. So after some help from the shop and our parts team, they set me up with a nice short strap, um, which ended up working out very well. And I've added a few more to the collection, like this fun pink one. Um, but that's probably why I wore it most this year was because it's special to me and it's so versatile. The watch I wore the most this year is a Rolex Day Date 1803 from the mid 1980s. Uh, it's tropical uh, in two different ways. One is that the dial has kind of faded, normal tropical dial. But the other is that because I wear it on a strap, it sort of has the look of something you'd wear in the tropics. Uh, a friend of mine said it looks like something a retired baseball player would wear in the Bahamas. And that is definitely the vibe we're going for. Hi, I'm Jay Seltzer. Uh, I'm a logistics lead here in Atlanta, and I wear my Oris uh, Big Crown Day Date. That's uh, my most worn watch because uh, I first uh, bought this when I started in the business about 20 years ago when I lived in Alaska, and I bring it with me wherever I go. Uh, every country I've been to, birth of my daughter, uh, I asked my wife to marry me wearing this watch, and that's why it's special to me, and that's why I wear it the most. Hi, I'm Veronica. I sit on our brand partnerships team and the watch I wore most this year is my vintage Seiko 5. It was gifted to me uh, by uh, my boyfriend. I, I really love it. It's a watch that I wear from day to night. Um, it has so many features that I love. The integrated bracelet, the Arabic uh, date window. Uh, it's just a piece that I take with me everywhere and it's, it's really one of my favorites. So. Hi, my name is Jamil Harris and I do quality control here at Hodinkee. Uh, the watch that I chose today is my Hamilton Dateline from 1968. Um, this watch is very special to me because it's one of the first automatic watches that I own and one of the first vintage watches that I've owned. I bought it at the beginning of this year and I kind of been wearing it every day ever since. It was one of the first watches that I bought actually getting into the watch industry and working here at Hodinkee. I was able to find it at a very reasonable and fair price at the vintage market. So it's pretty cool. It has a kind of gold plating on it. One of the reasons that it's special to me is the fact that it's shaped with that TV type of shape. So super cool looking watch. I'm Mark Wunsch. I'm the VP of engineering here. Uh, and the watch I wore the most this year is my John Mayer G-Shock for Hodinkee. I didn't expect to like this watch as much as I did, but uh, it's become kind of one of the most versatile pieces in my new yet ballooning collection. Uh, I have nicer watches, but this one I, I like a lot. Hey, my name is Matt. I work here at Hodinkee in the Valuations Department. I'm not really sure which watch I wore the most for the year, but I've been wearing this watch almost every day since I got it, and it is the Hamilton Khaki Field Mechanical for Hodinkee. I really like the vintage look of this watch. It has a matte black dial that has kind of a faded look when you get it out in the sun. The orange seconds hand adds a little fun to the watch and looks great against the dial. One small detail I really like is the font of the four. For some reason, I think that's really cool. It's just a thin, lightweight watch that's easy to wear and it looks great. And the limited editions team really hit a home run with this one. 
Hi, I'm Nora Taylor. I'm on the editorial team. And this year I wore these two tiny watches the most. Um, wore them at the same time, so it's not cheating. One is a small watch my mom got in Geneva in the late 60s that I wrote about. And the other is this teeny tiny vintage Longines. So yeah, I just really like to wear them together. Uh, I like that they're both vintage, but of different eras and they're fun to mix and match and always a nice conversation starter. I'm John Mealy. I'm the quality control lead here at Hodinkee. Uh, and this is my Rolex Submariner 16610. Uh, this was my father's watch. Uh, he passed it down to me recently, just for no particular reason. Um, but this was a watch that he bought shortly after I was born that he wore throughout his time uh, mowing lawns for a living. He started a lawn care business after I was born. And this, this watch has been through the ringer uh, through most of my childhood. It didn't function at all. Um, but recently we got it restored at Rolex and now it's working great. Hi, I'm Mark Kozlerich. I'm one of the editors at Hodinkee, and the watch I wore most this year is my Tudor Black Bay 58. I got the call from my dealer that this was available for me while I was on my last assignment for National Geographic as a National Geographic Explorer, and I convinced them to hold on to it for a little bit so I could get back to New York after my expedition and pick this watch up after wanting it for quite a long time. Hey guys, my name is David. I'm in the pricing department here at Hodinkee. The watch that I wore the most this year is just the classic G-Shock. I had a Casio as a kid, and last year I said, you know what, I really want another one. And this time I got the Casio G-Shock. And what I really like about this watch is that you can really wear it anywhere. I find myself just putting it on when I go to the gym, or if I'm at the beach, going in the water, on a hike, anything active. And I just love the comfort of it as well. I'm Masa, a web producer and editor at Horinki Japan. And this is my Patek Philippe Wartimer 5110P. I got this watch during the pandemic. At times, I would sit on the couch and look at the dial, dreaming that one day I will be able to travel again. This year, I was finally able to go on international business trips. It was pretty exciting to set the dial to place other than Tokyo. I want to wear this watch to many places in 2023, Hope to see you next year. Hi, I'm Jeremy, and I work in the logistics department, and I've chosen my uh, 1950s era long jeans uh, that I won in a trade with someone who probably got the better financial end of the deal, but my end of the deal was far more stylish. And I just worn it the most because it's slim profile, it's gold, which I really like. I love wearing yellow gold. It's got a nice linen dial, and it still keeps time really, really well, even though I'm pretty certain it has not been serviced ever in its life. My name is Alex Fortney. I'm a lead product designer here, and I make stuff. I called my buddy Zane, or actually I dropped in at uh, Diamond Cellar in Nashville, and uh, told him we were moving, and I bought a couple watches from him, and I was like, you know, we're heading out, we're, we're moving to New York. He was like, I really wanna, I really wanna make the Batgirl happen for you. So he called me four days later, I was not ready to buy it, and uh, I got ready real quick, so. Kind of marks a little milestone in our life of moving from Nashville, which is my hometown, up here. Hey, I'm Ed. I work in uh, pricing here at Hodinkee, and this is the watch I wore most in 2022. It's my 41 millimeter IWC Pilot Chronograph. This was the first watch I got when I started working at Hodinkee, so it's special to me for that reason. I also really like the legibility of it, even though it's a busier dial. It has a blue radial sunburst, which is pretty cool. Functionally, it's also just really awesome. It's got a um, really comfortable bracelet with these quick release end links that you can pop off without having to use a tool. Uh, it uses a normal spring bar, which is kind of cool. You can still add regular straps. Uh, it's got um, see-through case back, day and date, and uh, I think it's a pretty handsome looking watch, and overall, uh, I've been really happy with it and worn it a lot this past year.